What's going on everybody? It's Bay McLaughlin, AKA Beta Bay, and I'm here with another tech review. But this one is really special. It's both a tech review and a tech reveal for Puma's FI or Fit Intelligence shoe platform. You may have caught the Facebook Live that we did about two years ago with Engadget covering the early versions of this technology called the Autodisc. But if not, I'll put the link in the description down below so you can see where the technology started versus where it is today. So let's set the stage. Puma sent me these shoes a couple of weeks ago, and while I'm gonna be as unbiased as I possibly can be, I have to say I was super stoked to be the first person in the world to get these shoes. Both for continuity and also because he's one of the world's best tech reviewers, I pinged Richard from Engadget, get him a pair of shoes. So if you wanna see his review, I'll also link to that down below. The first idea I had when I heard about the Puma Fit Intelligence platform was could these shoes truly be the one pair of shoes for every aspect of my life, from travel to the boardroom to the gym and beyond. For me as an investor and an entrepreneur, especially because I travel way too much and I try to eke out every last ounce of every day and every night while also balancing my long-term health, this test is really important for me. So let me set the stage and walk you through the test where I took the Puma FIs through in Hong Kong and let you know how it went. Let's start out by getting off the plane and into the bullet train and into central Hong Kong. When I'm traveling, I tend to lace, unlace, lace and unlace again and again and again, depending on the pressure in the plane, whether my feet are getting cold, whether I'm chilling in the lounge or I'm late and I have to sprint to the gate. So it's really important for me to see how these shoes performed in a travel setting. So full transparency, I didn't buy a ticket and take a flight just for this tech reveal, but now that the technology's out there, I'll be wearing the FIs all the time in my day-to-day -day life, obviously traveling a lot. So if you want to catch any of the behind the scenes insights, I'll go ahead and link to my Instagram down below. I'll be putting up a lot of this information on my Instagram stories. Check it out if you're interested. Relaxing on the bullet train in Hong Kong, I kept the shoes completely loose. But once we got to Central and it was time to tackle the maze-like, uneven, crazy streets of Hong Kong, I decided to get up to a level two out of three on the tightness. The Fit Intelligence system defaults to three preset fit levels, meaning you can tell it what your maximum tightness preference is, level three, and it will automatically compute what level two and one should be. Then you simply have to swipe up on the tongue of the shoe or use the Apple Watch app or the iOS app and you'll see that I use all three of those throughout the review. Navigating from the bullet train to the office was really nice and I actually was doing some tests off camera. So I was taking out the iOS app while I was walking and I was changing the tightness to see if it would work. Because if you want to change the tightness of your shoes while you're you know, in the city or moving, you have to stop, kneel down, tie, untie, which is obviously a pain. I'm a real addict for efficiency. So I was really stoked to see that the app would work while you were in complete motion. I don't know, I kind of thought that it wouldn't, but it did, and that was awesome. I decided to go a little bit out of my way, so those of you that know Hong Kong will see in the footage, I didn't go straight to the office, because I wanted to show people how cool the streets of Hong Kong were, some of the street art and the alleys, but while I love you guys, some of it just wasn't worth the wait. When I got to the office, I was a few minutes late to a marketing meeting with my team, so I wasn't gonna be able to sit down with my carry-on, open it, and change my shoes. So I just jumped into the meeting, opened up the iOS app, swiped the loose end, which was a complete cinch. At work, I used a standing desk, and I tried to stand all day long if possible. So it was really convenient to have the Apple Watch app versus the iOS app where I have to raise it, swipe to unlock, find the app, and deal with my preferences. So after knocking out some work before hitting the gym and then dinner with drinks and friends, it was really convenient when I was packing up just to raise my wrist, swipe down to tighten up the shoes, and I was off. Now for the workout. This is where I think the shoes were gonna be put to the real test. So I decided to bring in Alan from Biorna Quantics to kick my butt at One Personal Fitness in central Hong Kong to see what the FIs could really do. I started out with some wind bike and then some activation exercises before we started box jumps. Full disclosure, I do not do box jumps. So I had to really trust the fit intelligence system because I totally could have fallen and busted my face on camera. 
but luckily enough for me, they performed super well. I was able to clear all the different heights they challenged me to, and it was on to squats. The FIs have a really wide base, which made it really nice when doing squats. Now, I don't do really heavy squats, so I don't know how to compare them to a professional lifting shoe, but for me, they performed really nicely. I then moved on to leg press, and leg press is where I go really heavy. So I decided to tighten up a little bit more, and while stability in your core is not really important when you're doing leg press, it was still really nice to have a nice strong grip and not have my feet moving around while I was putting on a lot of weight. Now, lunges were what I was really interested about because when you're doing a lunge, there's a lot of motion from your toe to your heel, and because you don't individually tighten the lower laces and the upper laces on the FIs like you could really adjust on a normal shoe, I wasn't sure how they would perform. So other than my legs being complete jello and having to drop weight so I wouldn't look stupid on camera, these performed really well. The best part about it is I never really noticed anything. I just performed the lunges with as long as I could, as much weight as I could, and they performed great. The FIs transitioned from walking into the gym, to warming up on the bike, to box jumps, squats, leg press, hack squats, and lunges without any issue, which I was really pleased with. So after a hard workout, it was really easy to get out of the shoes, a simple swipe down on the tongue so I could quickly change and get off to dinner and drinks with friends. For generally walking around, I would generally suggest a one or two, and then I'd always leave level three for when you're doing high performance workouts. One thing I didn't mention, if you want to change the tightness settings even beyond level one, two, and three, that's no problem, totally possible. So if you're dealing with the shoe, it's really simple. You do the three swipes up to level three, and then really simply, you just touch and hold at the top if you want to tighten a little tighter, or touch and hold at the bottom if you want to loosen a bit. Same thing on the iOS app or on the Apple Watch app. And it's really cool because once you get past level three, it then remembers that new default setting as now your tightest, so you don't have to do those small increment settings again later. At drinks, it was really nice to have the FIs fully open, which I didn't really think about before because there's far more instances in my day-to-day -day life where I'd like my shoes to be far looser, but wouldn't obviously want to have my shoelaces undone just laying around and looking ridiculous. After drinks, it was off to a well-deserved dinner after a crazy long day, as per usual, and then back home. Once I got home, it was really simple. Swipe down, slip out of the FIs, put them back on their charging dock, and then it was lights out for me. So there's one other aspect of the shoes that I didn't cover in the video that you should know about, the travel case. To live a modern lifestyle with all the gadgets and wires on the go, it'd be really inconvenient to have to travel with the Puma charging plate in addition to all your other stuff. Puma thought about this and they created a nice travel case that's kind of reminiscent of Apple's AirPods where you can slip in the two lithium ion batteries that are resting under the soles of the shoe. I was really happy to find the battery container so neatly contained under the sole of the shoe and how the travel case made it really convenient to make sure that I always had a charge for my Puma FIs no matter where in the world I was. And speaking of charge, I wasn't really sure how the FIs were going to handle a full day of testing with this video. We started at noon and we didn't end until 10.30 and we were opening and closing and tightening and loosening constantly. And by halfway through the day, we are at 87% charge. And at the end of the day, we are at 70%. And we were probably opening and closing, tightening and loosening the laces at least 10 times more frequently than anyone would normally do in their life. So I can safely say that charging and battery life is not gonna be an issue for anyone. And Puma's made sure to add a safety feature in because at 3% battery, the shoes will automatically open to let you out. And it'd probably be a little freaky to be stuck in your shoes when the battery does die. So what comes next for the Fit Intelligence shoe platform? Well, some of the ideas I've had that I would like to see are some simple things like upgrading the Bluetooth chips to 5.0, which is a new chip technology and platform standard that's come out this year. That'll give the connectivity a little bit more robustness and stability. Also, I'd love to see the application and the software actually see the exact degree to which you're tightening the shoe so you can fine tune your fit even better. 
and some of the crazy ideas, obviously being an investor in IoT and sensors and that type of technology, I wanna see even more sensors in the shoe in the future, maybe pressure sensors, motion sensors, anything that can tell me more about my day-to-day -day life and make my life just a little bit better. Overall, I have to say I'm really stoked that the FIs are now in the wild and I can start wearing them each and every day because I don't like carrying the extra shoes for the gym and I really like the ability to have them completely loose during times when I'm sitting down or I'm not in the move. And that these shoes are gonna last when I'm training super, super hard. It's really nice. I'd recommend these shoes for anyone that wants to stay on the latest tech trends, someone who wants to get rid of the extra shoes in their day and have a single trainer throughout every aspect of their life, or for anyone who wants to learn and get really personally experienced the future of dynamic fit technology. If you want to check out the unboxing of the Puma FIs or any of the other behind the scenes footage that we took during this reveal, I'll put all the links in the description down below. Thanks for checking out the tech review and reveal of the Puma's FI or Fit Intelligence shoe platform. As always, keep living in beta, keep asking Beta Bay, and I'll see you later. Peace.